My name is uh, Professor Russell Foster. I'm uh, a researcher at the University of Oxford and I've spent you know, most of my professional career studying light. The big question that we started to address almost 20 years ago now was how can the eye, which has evolved to grab images of the world, also grab an overall impression of the amount of light in the environment? What we don't really appreciate is that most of our lives are spent in sort of dim, dark caves. Uh, shortly after dawn, environmental light is some 50 to 100 times brighter than average office or home lighting conditions. Now we don't sense that big difference because the, the eye and the visual system is constantly adapting to get enough light to, uh, to, to, to see and to read. We started to explore this whole area of, of this other light sense within the eye. First of all with mice. Mice carrying retinal diseases whereby the classical visual cells, the rods and cones, have broken down. They were visually blind. We popped them in a running wheel, we connected the running wheel to a computer and we exposed them to a light-dark cycle. And what was truly extraordinary is that these mice would align their body clock to the light-dark cycle with, with unattenuated sensitivity. So the fact that they were visually blind was not affecting their ability to regulate their internal clock by the light-dark cycle. We also found humans who also had retinal diseases where they had no rods and cones but could still regulate their body clocks. And to cut a long story short, we discovered that one in a hundred of those, those ganglion cells is directly light sensitive. They use a special light sensitive molecule. That molecule interacts with a whole bunch of proteins which are quite remarkable and unique. So you can be visually blind but still retain the ability to detect light to regulate your internal clock. And what I find amusing is, sort of anecdotally, that impact of light upon my sense of well-being. So the alarm clock drives me out of bed in the morning, I clean my teeth, I hop into the shower, I'm still groggy. And what I need to do is to expose myself to morning light. Of course, that morning light will set my body clock to the local time, but it'll also increase alertness. In fact, I sort of call this the photon shower. Um, in parallel with my sort of aquatic exposure, I need also an appropriate photic exposure. So during my commute into Oxford in the mornings, uh, you know, it can be one of those fantastic bright autumn mornings and you just feel um, a different sort of person. You feel more alive and looking forward to getting into the lab and getting on with some of the science.